People who subscribe to the ideology of transgenderism will sit there and adamantly argue that trans women are actually women, even though they were born with male private parts and they cut them off and now they wear dresses and say that they are women because they identify as women. Um, yeah, these uh, ideologues, these apologists for Sodom, these apologists for the imperialism of confusion will say that they are indeed women. And if you tell them that trans women are not women because they were born with male genitalia, they will say, well, no, they identify as women. And yes, they were born with male genitals, but they cut those off and they pretend that they have a vagina. So they are women. And then if you say, well, trans women aren't women because it's impossible for a trans woman to get pregnant because they're not women. <laughs> they're men. It's so sickening that people actually believe this. But if you tell them this, if you tell them they're not women, they're men, they can't get pregnant. It is impossible for a quote unquote trans woman to get pregnant because they're not women. They don't have a uterus. And the apologist for confusion will say, oh, so you're saying that those who are born female, uh, who, who, who later on in their lives can't have children because of some kind of biological condition, are you saying that those women aren't women either because they can't get pregnant? And then so we have to sit there and we have to go back and say, well, no, because, uh, because those women are an exception. And yet they still have all of the parts. They, they were born with all of the right parts. Uh, to be called a woman. Um, they are men who have difficulty getting a, a, a woman pregnant, but we still call them men. They have all of the parts. They were born with all of the parts. And even if you want to make that argument, uh, men who cut off their private parts and wear dresses, there is absolutely no way for them to get pregnant. It is impossible. We're not talking about biological conditions here where you know that, that prevent women from getting pregnant. We're talking about men who cut off their private parts and then call themselves women. It's impossible for them to become pregnant. The only humans that can become pregnant are female humans. That is it. You can't sit there and take an exception to the rule and then make it the rule. But anyway... They will sit there and gaslight us and say, no, they're women. You're looking at a woman. You're like, no, I'm looking at a cross-dresser. I'm looking at Buffalo Bill from Silence of the Lambs. And so then comes the abortion controversy. And with the abortion controversy, they have to then actually abide by biology. Because if a pro-life man comes to them and says that abortion is immoral, they will say, come talk to me when you get a uterus. You're not a woman, so you will never understand. Today, I got into a little debate on Instaho, Instagram, with uh, a, a woman that I follow on Instagram. Uh, the reason why I follow her is because she owns Backyard Chickens. And you know, when this whole Roe v. Wade thing got overturned, I noticed a lot of the people that I've been following are very pro-choice. And these are people who garden and they have chickens. And you think, you know, you think like usually it's conservatives who are doing the whole homesteading thing. No, there's plenty of lefties who are involved in that also. But anyway, um, she, she did this whole thing where she said, hey, because she lives in California. So she said, hey, if anybody out of outside of California who, who wants to get an abortion, you guys can come to California. I will help you get an abortion. I, I, I have friends who will help you get an abortion, blah, 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 the whole thing. And on her post, she wrote uh, pride and she put the little rainbow colors on. So she's pro-abortion and she's pro-sodom. And so I put a little comment there. Of course, I was trolling her and I was, you know, I'm, I'm there to, to press buttons because I don't really like these people and I don't like what they stand for. But I, uh, I put a comment there saying, oh, so you're just upset that people have a right to be born because really at the end of the day, the whole abortion controversy lies on uh, a point of contention. And that is, do people have a right to be born? Do people have a right to life? Uh, do people have a right to be born? And if they don't, then um, abortion is permissible. But if people have a right to be born, then abortion is not permissible. Abortion is immoral. It's murder. 
It's preventing people from having a chance at life. Life on earth, life outside of the womb. So she said uh, basically the same old spiel. You know, talk to me when you have a uterus. You're not a, a woman. You're a man. You'll never understand. Blah, 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 blah. And I said, I don't need to be a woman to understand that we all have a right to be born. So I don't know where this whole woman thing comes from. And she said, um, she said um, something, I forgot what she, some kind of nonsense. I forgot, I, for, I forgot exactly her response to me, but I remember telling her, um, yeah, but she, she basically told me that you're not a, a woman, you're a man, so you don't understand, blah, 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 you're in no position to speak, that sort of thing. And I told her, uh, are trans women allowed to give their input on this subject? Because trans women don't have uteruses, so now she's stuck in a in a <laughs> she's stuck in a real predicament here. Because if she says no, trans women are not allowed to give their input; they are in no position to give their input because they don't have uteruses. Then trans women aren't women; they're men. And if she says yes, they are allowed. Well, now she just screwed herself because they don't have uteruses. So what, men have to wear dresses in order to give their input? So the whole pro-choice movement uh, refutes the transgender ideology. And the transgender ideology is nonsense, it's insanity, and it's just evil. The whole thing is pure evil. It reminds me of uh, Buffalo Bill from Silence of the Lambs. When I think of transgender people... Um, I don't think of freedom and love and equality. I'm thinking of serial killers and uh, I'm thinking of uh, Silence of the Lambs. It's very pagan, actually. The Bible warns us about this. It talks about, you know, it, it warns us against this uh, this idea of, of men dressing up as women. And it says that men uh, uh, cannot, are not permitted to to wear women's clothing. So the Bible warns us about this about this evil. And in the ancient uh, world, in the Canaanite world, the Canaanites being the people that the Hebrews conquered um, and, and took the land of Canaan from and made it into, the, into Israel, um, the Canaanites had a ritual in which a woman would, or really a man, sorry, not a woman, a man, would uh, have his private parts cut off, and then he would become a temple prostitute for Molech, or for, not Molech, for Ashtaroth, the goddess, the uh, the goddess of the planet Venus. Uh, the ancient Aztecs had a very horrifying ritual in which a man would be skinned, and then the skin would be worn by one of the, uh, by one of the temple priests, and the temple priest who would be wearing the skin of this man would stay as a recluse inside of the temple for I think like two weeks or something like that. It's horrific. And this whole transgender thing, the way that they're introducing it, they're introducing it with a smiley face and all that. It's really a way, it's like a gateway to get us into the paganism of ancient times. You know, when the Spaniards came to the state of Texas, when they were invading Texas from the indigenous people. Uh, the Spanish fought Native American warriors who dressed up as women. And the Spanish said that they were utterly terrifying. The, these were warriors who would um, have their private parts cut off and they would dress up as women, but they were vicious. And they were very, very um, scary. It was scary to fight a man who dresses up like that. It is. It's disturbing. And the Spanish, I'm certain, hadn't really seen anything like that back in Europe. And it was very disturbing. But today, we see this as something normal and wonderful. And, you know, it, well, not but most people, I think, know it's weird. But they're trying to push it on us as something that's normal and wonderful. And, and you know, to me, it's just creepy. You know, it's just absolutely creepy. There was a, a serial killer back in the... Uh, was in the... 80s and, and 90s. His name was uh, uh, Dennis Rader back in Wichita. America is full of serial killers. There's no shortage of them in our history. Um, I think our oldest serial killer goes back to the late 1700s. So we have a, a very long history of this. But Dennis Rader was one of the many serial killers in American history. Dennis Rader murdered several people, terrorized... Uh, the area of Wichita that he uh, that he lived in, and uh, 
this guy would dress up as a woman. And uh, he would murder women. Most serial killers murder women because they're cowards. And they're, they're cruel and they're evil, but they're cowards, so they don't want to face a man. They want to, they want to murder the weak. Um, he would murder women, and then he, he, after he would murder a woman, he would put her body in a, in a very weird position. Like very weird position. It's so, it's so horrifying. It gives me chills just talking about this. And when his wife wasn't home, because Dennis Rader was a good family man, he went to church every single Sunday. And I think he went to church every Thursday night for Bible study. Oh, and he was the president of his congregation, too. Well, while when, when his family wasn't home and he was by himself, he would put a dress on, and then he would do the positions that he would put his victim's bodies in and then he would photograph himself in these positions it's so disturbing when we look at that we say wow that's disturbing but that's what they're trying to push on us they're trying to push on us this weird sick fetish of men dressing up as women and we we look at a guy like dennis Rader, or we watch silence of the lamb we say oh that's so creepy and it is i have the same visceral response when I hear about men dressing up as women. It's so creepy. It's sickening. Guys, it's sickening. But the whole pro-choice movement refutes it because they say that we can't talk about abortion because we're not women. Okay, so can trans women get involved in the in the political discourse of abortion? Can they? Are they, are they permitted because they don't have uteruses? If they say no, they're not permitted, well, they're not women. They're men. If they say, yeah, they can be, well, then <laughs> you're full of shit. Anyway, you guys just heard some Theo logic. God bless.